hey guys in this section we are going to work on integration test here also we would be using kafka receiver and kafka send but we need a kafka server to run for our services to produce and consume events right we are not going to mark our services actually so we need a kafka server so for that we have two options so one is test container if you are familiar with that you can use that the real kafka container you can use for your integration test the other option is embedded kafka a simple in memory solution for running integration test so i like this so i am planning to use this actually i have also used the test containers in my other course uh, the docker course actually so first we will see uh, how this embedded kafka works okay so let's create a simple test to understand how this embedded kafka works then let's go from there hey guys in this lecture we are going to create a simple test to understand how embedded kafka works so please go to source test java and uh, i am going to uh, change this class name to embedded kafka playground something like that but you can keep in name you like embedded kafka playground test something like that and uh, this is a playground class i don't want to use spring boot test okay so no worries we will be using that later but uh, here in this lecture or in this class i would like to use this annotation embedded kafka okay so this comes from spring framework kafka test package okay so now let's simply run this actually and see if it works or not and if you see yeah we can see zookeeper something it prints this properties and all okay so if you notice if you notice uh, there are some properties like for example count how many brokers you want to run if you say three it will it will be running three um, brokers and it will simulate a cluster for us okay and which port you want to use how many partitions you want how many topics if you see it's a string array so you can create multiple topics actually so if you give all those things um here so it will be creating a kafka broker uh, which contains all those topics for us so that we can write our test actually okay so this is cool right also you will be seeing the zookeeper and all so no worries um it's totally fine um hey why we are not using kraft again as i said kraft is kind of new at the time of recording this course so zookeeper, zookeeper is what most of the people are still using okay also how kafka cluster is being managed is like zookeeper kraft it doesn't really matter to us as a judge as a developer if you are interested in only how to produce events and consume events okay so let's not worry about all those things now what we are going to do is that using this embedded kafka i am going to see if we can produce and consume events properly okay just a simple demo so let me change that to embedded kafka demo okay i am here i am going to use ports um, 9092 this is the port we are using right throughout this course this is what we have been using so let's use the same port okay um i am also going to take our very first uh, simple the kafka this consumer okay A very simple okay let me copy this guy the whole guy okay so let me copy this let me come here and i'm going to create a simple class consumer let's keep it like that let's let's paste it here okay so let me change this to run something like that okay okay i forgot to copy the logger sorry about that let's do that as well now let's do the same for uh, the producer as well so let me create a a simple producer class private static class producer let's keep it like that and uh, let me copy the producer this time let me st start from the logger copy that and uh, let's paste it here okay so okay perfect now i'm going to make few more changes here 
okay the, the again as usual the producer side i'm going to remove this and i'm going to change this to run okay so now here we are subscribing i don't want us to subscribe instead uh, let me say then something like that and uh, let me return this okay i am also do not want to um, do this in the interval i would like to produce 10 items 1 to 10 okay so take 100 does not make any sense so let's remove that so why this guy is throwing this error okay mainly is because i have to return on off void okay so this is good right okay this is our producer let's do the same for subs uh, consumer as well then and i'm going to return this okay so let okay now here also we are returning mono of void couple of more simple changes actually um, here we are emitting 10 items I, it will be super fast I'm, i intentionally like to delay not seconds probably millis like 10 milliseconds okay so let's keep it like that okay and uh, here right the receiver that will never stop it will keep on running you know this okay so we are saying we are going to say that take 10 items because that is what we are emitting actually so whatever the 10 item 10 items we are emitting right we also want to receive those 10 items um, in the in the consumer side if you are going to receive all those 10 items then that's it um, our embedded kafka works let's assume like that okay so that's what we are saying so after 10 items it will emit cancel signal and it will stop okay so our test will stop otherwise our test will never complete actually so now let's uh, write the some test okay when i say test i'm going to use the step verifier the reactor step verifier for writing unit and integration test so basically just to start the producer and start the consumer that's what i'm going to do nothing else actually okay so step verifier create first let's produce item so let's run the producer producer dot run and since it returns a mono of void right let's ensure that it emits we are getting the complete signal that basically means that it was able to produce successfully okay similarly we are going to say step verifier that create consumer dot run and here also going to we are going to expect a verify complete hey what about the assertion you might ask so no worries again as i said this is simple playground to see how this works so we are going to write a proper integration test later so no worries okay guys now let's run our test as i had said earlier please stop the docker container kafka container if you are already running or the kafka process okay stop everything we are going to use this okay so uh, now let's run this wow this is faster than I had expected. So that was super fast. So, okay. Now, if you see, uh, since we started the produce, we produce first, right? So the producer configuration, it's uh, printed, same stuff, bootstrap server, all those things. We have seen this enough. So if you keep on scrolling down at some point before the consumer starts, we can see the producer actually. Okay. So it says 1342 something like that instead of 12345 in the proper order. Why is that? So no worries. Let's come to that later. But the items are produced. Okay. All the items are produced, which is good. And again, now once the producer is stopped, it's once it's completes, right? Here the producer is unregistered, it's stopped. Okay. Now the consumer starts. Uh, same stuff if you keep on scrolling down at some point we can see all the consumer it's consuming all the 10 items okay so this is great but we did not even create topic how come it worked okay that's mainly because uh, there is a property called uh, allo auto create topic something like that okay so yeah so we, we what we can do is we can disable this actually even in the broker side there, there, there is a property um auto create if you see auto create topic enable this is the broker side actually so we can disable this at the broker side so let's copy this and another one um, thing is by default the partition is number of partition is two actually so that is why we do not we did not see the one two three four five the proper order okay so let's do that one by one uh, 
let me change the partitions to one actually okay so let's run this okay so now if i scroll down and if i check the producer it's one two three four five six, okay in the proper order and if i go to the consumer here also one two three four five is in the proper order okay so if you want to change the partition for your test you can change it okay another thing here is um, if you see the broker properties the server broker properties the server properties normally we give right in our docker compose so we can also give here the broker properties if it's um it's an array like this so by default um it's true we can change that to false okay so now if i try to run this right the producer will keep on retrying actually because if you see there is no topic it's getting uh, unknown topic okay so let's stop this okay so if you want to create topic yourself here we can do that the, there is an, another property called the topics so what are the topics you want so we can also specify like this so in our case our topic name is order events okay so now this will be creating a topic okay so let's run this and as usual this is fast good actually so we are able to produce and we were able to consume hey guys in the previous lecture we were able to produce and consume events using embedded kafka and everything went great okay but one small thing what we have to notice here is we are using port 9092 and we are talking about integration test in the real life when you when you use a ci cd build server like jenkins and all right we might be running integration test for multiple builds in parallel okay so and we all cannot ask for hey give me port 9092 we cannot ask like that that would be causing some port conflict okay so probably in the real life we might want to use random ports so if that's what you want you can simply disable this just do not ask for port so we will be getting random port for ember at kafka okay now the problem is if i'm going to use random port how do I get that information here so that my producer application because that this will want to connect to the broker right so how do how can I get that information here so for that there is a simple option actually let me comment this and let me print that out it's embedded Kafka condition okay embedded Kafka condition dot get broker so this will give you the embedded Kafka broker it has few methods actually um, the one particular method we are interested in is get brokers as string okay so let me run this wow okay so if you notice now it gives us the port in which it listens actually okay so we can use this information um, to for our application to connect to that broker produce and consume events okay so now let's update our test quickly and see um, whether it works so i'm going to take this and i'm going to create a variable called brokers let's keep it like that okay okay so now let's um, uncomment this okay and here it is going to accept the brokers simple stuff okay so let's use this here and here also let's use this quickly okay string brokers okay so now i'm going to pass the brokers here brokers here okay so i'm going to use random ports now let's run and see okay so if you notice uh, now our producer right it's trying to connect to some random port okay so and of course we should be able to produce all the items and we should be able to consume all the items 
let's start working on writing integration test for this application whatever we have created okay so i'm going to slightly restructure this so i'm going to create a separate package just for this integration test under source main java and i'm going to call this section 17 okay so and i'm going to copy whatever we have created there is no change um, but let's paste it here section 17 okay and i'm going to create two packages here producer and the consumer okay so basically i'm kind of trying to simulate two different applications okay so the consumer config dummy order consumer under the these are like consumer related stuff right so let put it under consumer and the rest of the things are like producer stuff so let's put it under producer package okay so basically i am trying to simulate two different application okay so we are going to test whether if our order event producer application is working properly so we are going to do some integration test similarly uh, what about my consumer order event consumer does it consume the event properly so that's what we are going to check by writing um, integration test I also have to make um, another change under this, this Spring JSON trusted package. So um, for the restructure, I'm going to change this to 17 consumer, okay? Because that is where our dummy order that class is there. So let me change it like this. So I basically restructured uh, um, those classes in a separate package to simulate this. So we have an application that is a producer which will be keep on producing events then there will be a consumer application which is going to keep on consume these events so in our case consuming the events and uh, we are simply as part of the processing we are simply uh, printing on the console but no worries we are going to develop an application after this section so that time we can do things better actually okay so okay let's come back to this so we are going to write integration test for this okay so the way in which we are going to do here is first we are going to test our producer application so the producer application will be producing the events okay so the here instead of the docker container kafka server or real kafka server we might want to use embedded kafka so how we are going to validate if our producer application is producing events so when it produces to this embedded kafka right we are going to consume the event and to confirm that yes the producer is properly producing event i can see that it's working so this is how we are going to validate similarly for the consumer application in our integration test we will be producing events into the kafka topic and we are going to see the consumer application receiving those events from the embedded kafka okay so this is how we are going to write our test okay Hey guys, in this lecture, I'm going to create an abstract test where we will be keeping some utility methods for our integration test. Okay, so let me create a simple abstract test, abstract IT integration test. Let's keep it like that. Okay, so I'm going to keep this as abstract. This is going to be the Spring Boot test. So let's add the annotation as we are going to use spring boot test for all the integration tests so let's keep the annotation here in the base test okay and we are also going to use embedded kafka so let's use that and uh, it will be creating two partition so this will be confusing so sometimes so let's keep it one partition okay and if you want to three see whatever you want you can create actually okay so i'm keeping as one and the topics it will automatically create which is great but let's keep things a little bit explicit so order events topic create this topic for me so that is what we are seeing okay so this is good for now spring can auto wire the embedded kafka broker so auto wire private embedded kafka broker we can call this broker so whatever the instance we we were using right embedded kafka condition so um, then we were getting the broker right so this is this instance actually okay so the this this instance okay this is what we are auto wiring here then let's create couple of utility methods for other test to use okay so 
I'm going to keep this like a protected and uh, I'm going to get a calf, create a Kafka receiver okay so I'm going to keep this as a key generic okay so I'm going to say kv oops okay like this then create receiver okay so let me import this okay so now there is there is something called kafka test utils actually okay if the kafka test utils right you can create consumer properties okay actually there are multiple ways to do this if you want even in the test class you can auto wire kafka properties right so whatever the yaml you have here um, you can get all those properties here as well if you want that is one thing or we can also create a profile specific um, the application test yaml you can also have something like that okay so you know all those things actually these are like basic spring stuff uh, nothing specific to this but here we have something called a kafka test utils so let's take a look at this actually okay so in the test utils we can create um, the consumer properties actually so this will give us the consumer properties we have to pass these certain options so what is the group name you want and you want to enable auto commit and give the broker instance so what it will do is that um, if you look at this so it will basically create the, these properties for us just for the integration test actually however the key deserializer value deserializer and, and all right by default it uses integer and string which we might want to override depends on our test actually so we want some flexibility okay so okay so this is what we are going to use we are going to use this and slightly modify so what are the fields it expects it expects the group name auto commit and the graphka broker so the group name can be it's a it's a test so it can be test group and we can enable auto commit it's a integration test or we can change it to false it doesn't really matter okay and pass the broker instance we already have here okay so that's it we can create the variable here and i'm going to use var okay but if you notice by the default it uses integer deserializer and the string deserializer okay remember that okay it's fine so now let's create the receiver options dot create let's pass the properties okay so and we can call this options war options okay and we are going to say this is k comma v type okay so now we can say return kafka receiver create options okay so how are we going to provide the options for other tests to go or write this uh, these props okay so let's talk about that in the next lecture let's continue working on creating this receiver so um, now we are going to take a look at how are we going to update these options um, so for that if you take a look at these options right the if you try to use any of this method like subscription value deserializer consumer property so you will be getting the updated receiver options back something like this so because of this i'm i'm thinking we can give the we can this method can accept the unary operator so here receiver option of k comma v i'm going to call this a builder okay so now options equal to builder dot apply options okay so basically they can provide some behavior whoever is going to call this so we will be giving them the options object get that updated and we will be receiving the updated options um, so that we can create the new um, the base based on that we can create a receiver now we are going to create another method here which overloads this um, probably if i do this right you will understand what i am doing here so kafka receiver we are going to by def we can create like this okay so create receiver okay so return create receiver 
we are going to call this method now we will be accepting options we will be receiving options here okay so now we can update the receiver options based on our requirement something like that so for the default case i am going with the new string deserializer okay and uh, for the value deserializer i am going for the json deserializer okay and we also want to add the trusted package so we can say star and this guy highlights is mainly because of the v type so we have to explicitly say that it's v actually okay so this this warning is okay so do not worry about it it basically it's because it implements the deserializer which is closable okay so if you try to use deserialize all those things okay but uh, this is um fine in our case we are not doing anything actually so this is totally fine and the receiver will also want to listen to a topic so i am going to accept the var args i'm going to call this topics okay so then i'm going to add subscription list of topics okay something like that hey guys in this lecture let's create the order event producer test to test this application okay so let's create the order event producer test which extends the abstract id now let's add the test method i'm going to call this uh, producer test by producer test i basically mean this application actually okay so this application is going to keep on producing events we are going to consume here and see if you are getting the events or not if i go and check right our application is basically um designed in a way that it will be emitting events uh, every 500 millisecond Okay, so it will be emitting, emitting 1000 events. So we are not going to check for 1000 events. Um, we are going to check uh, first 10 events. If you have received properly eh, within like 10 seconds, we are going to assume that our test basically passed. Okay, so this is what we are going to assume. So application will produce and we have to consume. Okay, so let's add the test annotation as well. For us to consume, we need the receiver here. So that is why we have created the receiver utility. Okay, so you can use uh, the base class receiver utility, and uh, you can also, if you want to override options, right? O dot consumer property with uh, if you want some um, different receiver with a specific property just for a single test, you can override this and create a receiver. Okay, like this. In our case, we want to consume order events. Okay and we want the json deserializer etc so we can go from there actually okay so receiver and by default it will say object but you can say order event okay. this is not section 16 order event this is section 17 producer order event okay so that is what it is then uh, i we can use the receiver dot receive here it will keep on going to emit a lot of events right i'm interested in only 10 events then i am also going to print actually i feel like we can just print it so let's come copy this guy and paste it here uh, we also want the logger let's come paste it here as well so or even producer test okay so now our order events is ready to order events flex okay let's bring the step verifier to verify this um, order events so step verifier dot create now this guy will be accepting order events okay so we are going to expect 10 items there are multiple ways to validate this we we can collect everything as a list and we can validate or we can also use consume next with multiple times if you want for example you can say my first item right uh, it's going to be a receiver record of string order event okay i can simply say assertion assert not null or dot uh, value is an order event whether the order id should not be null i can validate like this okay 
uh, for the next event should be order id should be two i can i can keep on going like this i can write 10 times if i want so this library is actually is cool okay but we are going to just validate one one item and we are going to expect 10 more items sorry nine more items okay we are expecting 10 one i am validating like this then expect nine more records that's what i'm saying okay then expect complete signal only after that we will be getting complete signal okay verify the entire test should not be taking more than 10 seconds that is what we are validating okay that's why we are validating it is not like we are going to block for 10 seconds if the test is going to take only five seconds it will it will pass and it will exit okay so maximum it should not be taking more than 10 seconds that's what we are saying okay also if you do not like this way of doing again collect everything and do the validation there are multiple ways this library is cool just i thought of showing you this now if i try to run this test right uh, the spring will try to scan this and this so this will be causing some confusion for spring so let's come to spring boot application and we can say the scan and the base packages okay so here we can give this package up to 17 and when i start this will start both producer and the consumer okay we do not want consumer we are we are validating only the producer application um, so for that i'm going to say app something like that i'm going to variableize this let's go back to our test now here i can use the test property source here i can provide the properties and i can say app is producer so that it will be scanning this package and uh, it will be running that application so now when the application start it will start producing and we can see we our application is producing those events or not okay so that is idea everything looks good to me and uh, let's run this in the next lecture hey guys now let's run our test okay now let's if you check the log it says that could not establish the connection and if you notice it's trying to contact 9092 actually okay so the test failed of course if you see the consumer right the consumer basically consumer is our test actually so that creates embedded kafka with a random port so that's listening on this port but if you scroll down the producer configuration it uses 9092 so that's mainly because producer is application and the application is getting the 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 bootstrap server information right spring kafka bootstrap server information from here so it uses this port so how can i pass the embedded kafka port details to the producer application okay so for that actually there is a one cool property embedded kafka it fixes this so there is something called bootstrap server property so um, if you notice in the here we are getting the embedded kafka condition get broker get broker a string um, a string right this information right this information can be given to any of the properties if you want okay so we are getting that and we are asking embedded kafka can you update this spring.kafka.bootstrap servers this property can you update this property okay so when it starts this will also update this um, property with the bootstrap server uh, information so that our application will use embedded kafka now let's run the test one more time wow well, if you see i think it's producing actually okay the test passed okay so this is great so this is consumer so 52083 some random port and if you scroll down uh, then we can see the producer that is also uses the same port okay the random port whatever in the emirate kafka created so now if you check um, as and when as and when the producer is producing the events right okay the consumer right um, that is also receiving this order event producer test that's also receiving that event we see order event order id etc okay so that kind of basically confirms that okay our test is 
working hey guys this lecture will be a quick lecture but it's very important as well in the real life we might be having multiple integration test multiple test method inside a, uh, the test class okay so i'm going to simulate that so that i'm going to um, i can show you one problem actually so this is that is test one this is test two okay so i'm going to run the test and let's see as usual it will be producing and consuming events you see actually okay but if you see the second test it took only 16 seconds okay why so it also sees the same key everything um, if you notice okay it has received everything but the point here is that right we are using one embedded kafka okay as part of the test one we produce events and the test also consumes the event okay as part of the test two we do not have to produce anything because the kafka topic already has those events right so when the test two starts right it will immediately be like oh yeah those 10 events is already there yeah test passed so immediately it will pass the test you're getting right this could be problem in some cases okay so this could be okay in some cases this might not be okay in some cases so how can i fix this kind of problem spring provides a nice solution for this actually so there is an annotation called dirty context okay so probably you would have seen this so what it means is that uh, this test will be modifying my application context so clear the application context once this test finishes okay something like that that's what it basically mean okay so we can give this in the method level in the test method level if you want or you can also give in the class level okay so once all the test methods complete then it will be clearing the context something like that also it is it is always not like always after okay you can also do that before so something like that um, you, you can see actually the class okay if you are giving here probably you can you have to use class mode so here we i can use the method mode method here i can say after or before so uh, i'm going to say that once this test finishes uh, clear the the context okay something like that okay i don't have to give it here but still i'm going to give it here as well probably if you have test three something like that okay so we might not know in which order it will execute so let's run this now here in the test one we are producing consuming events as you see now if you see the test two also we are producing and consuming events okay so this is cool right now let's start working on the creating integration test for our consumer application there is a challenge in the consumer application that we consume we consume the event and we simply print it on the console and we are not using database or anything like that again this is a simple demo okay so how can i validate this this is going to be difficult right actually yes but we have another solution we should be able to um, capture uh, the console log okay so we can see whether our my application is logging in the console or not again i'm not saying that this is the best way to do the right way test okay i'm definitely no, i'm not saying that okay but we can try this way for this implementation okay we are going to develop an application actually after this section after that that is what we are going to do we are going to develop an application and we are going to bring the flux etc that time we can write better integration test okay so for now let's see uh, let's try to capture the output the console output and we can validate for this okay let's come to the abstract test let's create the create sender as we did for create receiver okay so you can also do side by side okay so you can do this like an assignment okay it should be simple stuff okay so i'm going to change this to kafka sender Okay, and it will be returning Kafka sender. Let's keep it like that. And we are going to say create sender. 
and we are going to accept sender options okay so okay so kafka test utils so producer properties okay so the producer property if we take a look at this right it's very simple it accepts the brokers that's it okay so let me clean remove this and if you take a look at this uh, if you take a look at this these are the properties it sets and it initializes the key serializer value serializer like this we do not want this we want string here we want json here so okay so we are going to um, create the sender options so then we are going to accept the builder so i think this is good and we want something like this so i'm going to copy this a method which overloads the create sender this guy so the create sender actually does not doesn't have to accept anything so which is good so kafka sender okay and the, it will be calling this create sender actually okay so this looks good so here in our case we want the serializer and here as well we want the value serializer and we do not we will not be subscribing to any topic okay simple then we want a string serializer and in this case we do not have to accept any package trust any packages json serializer okay so that's it guys then i also want one more utility method to create sender record so i'm going to keep this very generic as usual kv type right sender record it will yeah kv so it will be returning sender record kv okay so kv this is correlation metadata is also um, k type actually okay so to sender record so we will be accepting three fields string topic k key v value okay so return sender record dot create if you notice we are going to pass everything okay so topic partition can be null so that time it will be using the murmur to okay and the timestamp can also be null in, the, in that case it will take the current timestamp we have the key we have the value and the correlation metadata we are going to pass the key okay so that's it guys now let's create the order event consumer test order event consumer test okay so here as usual i'm going to copy the test property source here we are going to give this as a app is consumer okay so it will be invoking that um, invoking this application we also want this test to extend the abstract id we have created and let's create the the consumer test public void consumer test okay so if you remember i had told you that we are going we have to capture the the output okay so there is something called captured output spring boot okay so i'm going to say output and we also have to uh, um, use this uh, this extension actually extend with the output capture extension let me add that the uh, test annotation okay so now um, since we are going to test the consumer i have to produce right so for that let's call the create sender so the create sender will be okay so we need the kafka sender and uh, this is this is going to be order event from the section 17 producer okay just to be clear we will be producing order event into the topic but we are going to see this guy is going to consume that as a dummy order okay probably I, I would have used a better name but that is fine if you want to change it change it uh, but the idea expectation here is it has to decode that as a dummy order okay we are going to test that so for that i'm going to emit one event okay one is fine we can also emit more item but 
that doesn't really matter for now okay so we can try with one item so i'm going to generate one uuid okay so now i'm going to create one order event okay so the new order event the new order event is going to be this uuid whatever we have created and let's imagine that customer id is one okay and local date time now this is the order event i am going to emit okay but the way in which it has to decode is that uh, dummy order like that okay so the new dummy dummy order from section 17 consumer and if you see okay it wants the order id the order id is nothing but uuid order ID. okay two string because we are okay that's what you expect and the customer id customer id is also going to be one in the string format okay so this is how it expects now at this point we can create the sender record so var sr to sender record the topic is order events okay and the key the key can be anything just i'm going to give one doesn't really matter and we are going to emit order event okay just be careful do not emit dummy order okay so now our sender record is ready we can give the to sender so sender send we want the publisher type so mono dot just sr okay so okay also remember that at this point we will be putting in that event into that order event topic okay so the test will almost kind of exit immediately we want to wait uh, we, we, we want to kind of delay like like 500 milliseconds or so okay so then uh, then we are going to delay like mono dot delay duration of 500 millis okay something like that then okay so this what okay so this is our this is the actual uh, mono this is the sender okay so okay we have not yet subscribed so it will not send actually we have created the publisher so now we can create the step, step verifier step verifier create pass the mono okay in our case we are not expecting anything actually we we do not want sender result etc or if you want to validate sender result that's fine too no big deal um, for me i'm i'm going to ignore that sender result because our aim here is to whether the sending is successful or, or not that's not the goal our goal is to see the consumer has received the event in the dummy order in the in the in that format or not so that is the goal so this is not the assertion actually the assertion is going we are going i'm going to write now so assertion um assert true probably i can use that now this output okay here i'm going to use this output actually the output get out okay the system dot out out the, that get out that's that's what we are using and that contains okay that contains that dummy order object Dumb, dummy order to string okay so uh, this is what we are this is the assertion we are doing so what is this then so this is guy basically ensures that we are sending and we are waiting for like 500 millisecond before we do the assertion because as i said it will be super fast as soon as we send we, we cannot uh, we cannot expect anything in the output actually so it might take some time for the consumer application to receive the event and to print it on the console that is why um, we are intentionally waiting for 500 millisecond i think it looks good so let's run the test wow that was fast okay so if you scroll down mainly if you see right okay so this is what i am validating okay so again i'm not saying that this is how we have to write the test this is a great way to write the test i'm not saying like that okay just for our implementation since we are printing it on the console we are just validating whether we are getting this in that information in the on the console output okay so this is exactly why i am doing this just to confirm okay let me change this to two Ideally, the test should fail. Okay. 
okay so the test failed as you saw okay so oops okay so the test failed okay so that's it guys hey guys assignment time now we are going to do one assignment i would not say that it's very complex assignment but it is not going to be a pure kafka assignment it's going to be a mix of webflex r2dbc kafka servers and events etc okay so that is this is what we are going to do so product analytics there will be one product service users will be viewing all our uh, all the products in our platform business that will always want to know the user's behavior which product they view often location the user's location browsers so they will want to track this kind of information okay so as and when the users view the product the product service will be emitting an event the product view event something like that okay so it will be emitting that event there will be one analytic service this analytic service will be consuming that event it will do some calculation okay that that's going to be very simple i'll come to that later then it will be emitting that event saying that uh, these are the top 5 trending products now something like that to to the dashboard okay for this person to see so this is what we would be doing in a very very high level i'm going to share some details for you so that you can start also do not forget to write integration tests when you develop okay we do not focus on unit test actually that's fine um the real life we should be writing both unit test and integration test okay but here i assume that we are all familiar with the unit test um so that is why i'm trying to focus only on the integration test the product service will be more or less like this this is our ndt class okay so this will give you an idea how it's going to look like uh, okay we will be exposing one get endpoint product and id like this so we will be querying the database we will get the information and we will respond from the user perspective that's what is happening nothing else and we are not interested in put post delete all those things okay we are interested in only this for now okay so behind the scene as and when this get request is invoked the service layer should be emitting an product view event that will be like this initially i was thinking about tracking the browser location etc but the problem here is that right we are exposing rest endpoints so the browser and all does not make any sense and in in the local it's kind of very difficult to simulate the location etc so so i'm going to emit only the product id integer as part of the product view event okay so then you might ask why are you creating this class why can you not simply emit the integer type and the product id alone yeah we could have done that as well we can do that as well but having this class right it's kind of gives us the flexibility for example if you want to be creative and if you want to do some things on your own maybe you can try okay so this is why i intentionally keep it this way okay we will be using h2 database with the r2 dbc okay i have already shared as part of the, the resources download earlier i have already shared data sql product csv etc so you can keep that uh, under your source main resources so that it will be creating the table and it will be loading the data for you so that you can get started also write an integration test saying that um, whenever you view the product if you are able to emit the event successfully or not our analytic service will be more or less like this this will be consuming the product view event and it will be doing some analysis the analysis is basically nothing much we will be using h2 r2 dbc as usual and we will be having one table the table might contain multiple columns so it's up to you if you want to change the design please feel free to do uh, the way in which you like to do or uh, the way in which i am planning to do here is i am going to have one id column and the count column 
the id is going to be the product id since the product id is going to be unique and uh, i'm going to use i'm planning to use that as a primary key for that table so the thing is as and when a product is viewed let's say product number 12 that is viewed so i will be updating the count as one okay similarly the product seven is viewed and i will be updating the count as one then i am seeing another event for product view um, for the product id seven oh it's a, it, it was viewed again two times so i increase the count to two something like that so we will be keep on updating the count you are getting right so this is what i am planning to do also under the source main rio sorry i have um, i am also going to share the data sql so keep it under the source main resources to create the table okay or modify um, the way in which you want usually when you insert a record the id will be null but if you are going to set the id yourself then there will be some weird exception you will be facing i am going to explain why it happens and how to fix that in the next lecture so do not miss that please watch that okay we will also be exposing one more endpoint actually one endpoint in the analytic service okay one endpoint in the product service there is one endpoint in the analytic service this endpoint it's get and it's going to be a server send events streaming endpoint every three seconds it would be emitting the data for the product team to view what are the top five trending products so the dto will be like this product trending dto product id and what is the view count okay so it will be a list of like this okay so we will be returning a list the trending endpoint right it will be returning a list that list will be containing five products so like this in this format okay so based on the view count so we will be taking the top five when we use r2dbc and when you are going to insert an entity a new record if you are going to insert a new record then the id field should be null that is the expectation for r2dbc actually if you are going to populate the id yourself then we have to do one more thing otherwise it will be throwing that throwing one exception so i'm going to explain that now so that you can be careful and you can do accordingly so go to my blog uh, or go to this uh, go to winskuru.com if you search for r2dbc cred r2dbc cred you will be landing on this page okay so let's say this is a product table i'm creating like this okay and i have this entity class if i keep on setting description and the price and the id is null okay i can keep on inserting new record the id will be automatically um, incremented okay normally that's what we do actually the real life okay if i try to update an id and i update the description price etc then if i try to save right using the repository object it will assume that you are trying to update an existing record and it will try to update but let's imagine that i have records from 1 to 99 something like that okay there is no id 100 record in the table okay now i am trying to insert one record myself by populating id 100 some description some price if i try to insert this will not let me insert instead it will be throwing if i keep on scrolling down it will be throwing this this exception okay the row with the id 100 does not uh, exist it will be throwing exception like this because it will assume that it's an update okay but we know that we want one record with the id 100 but this will not let you insert okay because it will assume that it's an update okay so if you think that you need control that is if you want to recreate a record yourself by setting the id yourself then we have to implement this interface persistable interface for our entity class it has to implement this interface this is the the id type okay okay so this interface has one is new that method so you have to say that 
it's new somehow that's it that's that is the basic expectation for r2dbc okay so either id could be null or you can say that it's new by using some dummy field in the class okay so that you can um, say that it's new so that we can that will let you insert okay so i want you to be careful and uh, yeah this is way, this is the way to fix that hey guys i think i have given you enough information so you can if you want you can start working on the assignment i have also shared the resources so please use those resources okay if you have any questions please ask me okay so um there will be a couple of lectures actually in this section you can see that so it will be called a product service setup analytic service setup something like that in which i am going to quickly show what are all the things i have what are all the dependencies i have added how my dto looks like how how my entity looks like etc i'm going to quickly go through this okay why is it because i have already done this enough as part of my previous courses you would you might know okay so there is no point in re-recording all those entity dto car these are like super simple stuff we have already seen this enough okay the real challenge is in the service layer and the integration test so those things you can watch me doing from scratch but this stuff i'm just going to show what i have done so that if you want you can compare okay nothing else similarly for the analytic service i have i'm going to show show you what all the differences i have added how is how my controller looks like config looks like etc and you can watch me doing the service integration test and um, doing uh, i will be doing from scratch okay so that if you have any questions you can always watch all uh, these lectures appropriate lectures and you can compare if anything okay hey guys in this lecture i'm going to quickly tell you what i have done so far first i have set up the project okay the product service this is how i have named okay similarly uh, i am i am i have also created another service called analytic service okay with the same set of differences okay i am choosing the latest spring version so these are the differences i have added reactive web r2 dbc h2 database lumbok and uh, kafka we also have to add the reactor kafka which is not part of this this is something like we have to add explicitly you know that i have already shared so add that as well so let's generate two projects okay one is for product service and one is for analytic service once you have imported the product service into your ide please do not forget to add this uh, dependency this is super important okay also do a maven reload refresh once okay because if you add the dependency just do this once okay then um, i have already shared the resources the data sql please add this okay and the product csv this is nothing please add this as well so that when you start this project this will automatically create this product table with the data so that we can make use of that okay that is the idea okay and my application yaml is like this bootstrap server and the key serializer is string serializer value serializer is going to be a json serializer because we are going to emit the product view event object okay okay and i have nothing in my application properties okay i have also shared some index html static content you can see that i have not copied that here if you have already copied that's fine the my point here is let's not focus on that now that is not super important for now that is for final demo okay so for now let's focus on this and here i have not done any change okay everything is um, okay the same uh, this is my entity id description price okay i'm using lumbak is what i have and id is going to be the primary key okay of course then the corresponding ddo of course it looks exactly the same nothing much then the repository for the entity so product integer the primary key type repository etc okay then i am having one entity dto util to convert that entity to dto 
okay when we when you when i return via product controller i want to return the product dto so i am doing this entity to dto conversion here i'm using bean util copy properties just to increase my productivity just for this demo but in the real life i am not using this okay so this might affect performance so just be careful okay okay then let's go to the kafka producer configuration this is something like we have already done so kafka properties i'm injecting i'm creating producer properties creating sender option then i am creating sender template for the view event okay i did not talk about that okay let me go there so the product view event it's this as i have already sh mm, shown you this um this is how it will be okay so i'm creating one producer template for this okay then what else we have the controller the controller currently i'm um, 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 this is what I have now, nothing much. So once we worked on the service layer, then we can wire. Okay, guys, now let's get started with the, the service layer. So I'm going to create a product service. Let's not forget the service annotation. And here I need the product repository. So I'm going to say private final product repository repository okay um i'm okay i can use auto wire annotation i can also use lumbuck with the lr constructor okay so here public we are going to say mono of product dto that is what we are going to return okay so get product okay so we are going to assume we will be getting some kind of id okay so return this dot repository dot find by id give the id so now you will be getting um, the entity so we can use entity to dto util entity dto util to convert that to dto okay so we can return like this whenever this is invoked when we return this um, DTO or event, right? Um, this entity, right? So that time we want to emit an event. Okay. I do not want to auto wire the the um, producer template here in seed. I am planning to keep it as a separate class. Okay. So I am going to create the product view event producer something like that. I'm going to create one class like that okay so here I'm going to auto wire uh, the private final reactive Kafka producers template so here I'm going to keep this so that all the, the producer producing the logic can be kept here actually okay so product view event and we can call this um, template and here I'm going to use all our constructor so that this guy will be happy. I would like to show you something. So I'm going to create simple just some dummy method. Okay. So here. Okay. So if I say this dot template dot send right here, you can emit the event actually. Okay. So it's easy. But if you see the written type is mono, a publisher type. So what we can do here is we can emit the event and we return a mono of something okay and here we can do the flat map okay but i do not want to do that actually if we have done this it's nothing wrong please do note that it's it's nothing wrong okay that's totally fine okay but why i am not going to use that then it's mainly because the flat if i use flat map here right by calling this publisher if i use flat map here it has to wait for the producing event to complete okay it has to produce that event okay then it has to em emit the complete signal so i do not want all those signal nothing okay i simply what i really am expecting is that as part of the do on next i am going to emit the signal i do not want anything in return you are getting right for me, I, I want this to be completely asynchronous. Even if this is going to f fail somehow, okay, let it fail. But for me, 
we do not want the product DDO response to be affected. So we are going to emit something just we just we are going to return it whether this is complete or not we are we do not really care just to be very very clear if you had used uh, a mono return type or something like that if you have used if um, then or flat map this kind of operator that is totally fine as well okay so no worries okay so since i would like to use uh, as part of the do on next i would like to asynchronously emit so I need a few more things here then, okay? I need the sync. So I have to say private final sinks dot mini, okay? So product view event, and we are going to have one sync here, okay? Then I also, I'm also going to have the flux, flux of product view event, and I'm going to call this flex okay we can give meaningful name so these are like I'm going to assume that we are going to inject as part of the all our constructor everything will be injected into this uh, producer okay so no worries Let, let's come to that part later okay then what else we need we need the topic as well okay so private final string uh, topic okay so we are also going to have the topic then here we have uh, let's have one method public void emit event so product view event event so here I'm going to say this dot sing dot try emit next we can we are going to emit this event so here I'm not waiting for any publisher to return I mean complete signal error signal I don't have to, have to worry it's a void type simply I drop it and I leave that's it now let's have another method here the name can be start or subscribe any meaningful name will work actually okay so here as and when someone puts that event we can get it via flex you know that okay so this dot flex we can get all those events here and here I'm going to map that event to a producer record. So new producer record, producer record, it's not there. Okay, it's here. Okay. So producer record, so it expects topic key value. Okay, so the topic is topic. We already have that information. And what is the key? The key is I'm going to use um, product ID and uh, under two string because we have used a string key, right? Actually, I could have used the integer as key, um, integer type. Okay, it's fine. Let's not change it now. So, and I'm giving the event. So, this is the producer record. Then, I'm changing the producer record to sender record. So, sender record dot create. Um, here, which will be accepting the producer record. And we have to give the correlation, the metadata type, producer record dot key. Okay. So, here we will be having... Uh, the flex oops sorry I should not be using flex we have already used that okay it's a, it should be SR flex okay so it's a sender record of flex okay so this guy it's mainly because of the diamond okay now this guy is happy it returns uh, okay sender record string product view event string okay this is exactly what we want to see now we can use uh, the template this dot template send the send here which will be ac um, accept, accepting um, the sr flex we know that so we can send us then we can simply say subscribe okay so that's it so before that i'm going to include the logger as usual so logger log logger factory get logger okay so the product view even producer class okay so here um, as and when i produce right as part of the do on next I, it's a result so i'm going to say log dot info i'm going to say emitted event okay like this r dot correlation metadata okay so we clean this up 
Okay, guys, in the previous lecture, we worked on the product view event producer. Now, let's uh, bring this into this product service class, product view event producer. Okay, so product view event product view even producer let's keep it like that okay so now as part of the um, the do on next I'm going to here I'm getting the entity right so I'm going to say this dot product view even producer dot emit event so new product view event the event will be e dot get ID okay so that's it so whenever now the product is uh, viewed we will be emitting that event now let's go to the controller um, here I have to auto wire this right I already have all our constructor so I can simply say private final product service product service something like that now instead of mono dot empty I will be using this dot product service get product uh, product ID okay that's it super simple but we are not at done the product view event producer right someone has to uh, create this and uh, subscribe right so who is going to do that so i'm going to use the producer config in this this class okay so let's use uh, this okay this config class so here i'm going to create public product view event producer product view event producer this guy will be accepting this guy will need the template so i'm going to get it from here actually so template okay and using this we can create event producer it equals new product view event producer and if you notice it wants template sync flex and topic okay so the sync can be created easily sync dot many Okay, because we are going to keep on emitting item we are going to keep on dropping item okay things dot many and uh, unicast or multicast so in our case we are going to have only one subscriber so the kafka center so it's a unicast and uh, on cast sorry unique on back pressure buffer um, yeah then we can use the product view event diamond operator so that the sync will be accepting this product view event okay okay so var flux is equal sync as flux okay super simple stuff as you see now here we can give template sync flux and uh, okay the topic name the topic name it's not my okay so i can simply i'm going to hard code this okay so this is totally fine if you want you can get it from the properties that would be nice actually so it's okay product view events this is how i am naming okay so once you have created the event producer right you can start event producer and we can start that actually subscribe this is something like in the in the spring we have the the container start we'll do something like that right so the same stuff nothing much actually so here then at this point we can return the event producer okay and let's not forget the bean hey guys in this lecture let's work on writing integration test for our product service application what i have done is i have created abstract the integration test class whatever we have done earlier right as part of the abstract it we, whatever we have created as part of the integration i simply copied and pasted here nothing else okay so i create abstract it and copy paste everything basically we are going to use this as utility okay so okay just copy paste and M spring boot test embedded kafka so the product view events so i basically keep this as a product static final string so i am simply using it here okay partition one boot sub server property etc so you already know this okay same stuff then let's go to this this will be extending um, the abstract integration test we have we do not need this annotation because this base class has that annotation and i'm going to rename this product view and event 
test something like that okay some name so the way in which i am thinking here is uh, we are going to view some products okay then we are going to check if the events are available actually okay this is what the events are emitted okay this is what we are going to check okay so in order to view the products we need the web test client so we can auto wire auto wire private web test client client also if you know the web test client will not be given directly we have to explicitly say auto wire sorry auto configure web test client so that when we ask for it it will give now let's try to view the product so for that this dot client okay then uh, get okay what is the uri the uri is going to be uh, product okay yeah th that is the that's how we had said right okay product then id okay let's be careful so i'm going to give id one let's keep it something like that okay then exchange okay then mm, expect status okay 200 successful okay let's keep it like that okay and uh, expect body here we can let's validate um, whether the body contains using like the json path okay the dollar is, is the root document and under that check the id field that's what we are saying okay is id field is is, is equal to uh, one okay then again json path maybe we can stop at this maybe okay json okay let's check the description as well okay mm, description is equal to okay we should be getting product minus one something like that okay it's enough we don't have to check the price and all okay it's enough let's keep it like that let me quickly run this so that in case of issues let's fix this right away wow it works is it really working okay let me check this let me change that to two so ideally it should fail okay perfect i think it's working so uh let's keep this as okay let's put that one back here okay so i'm going to make this as a okay wired view product integer id i'm going to keep it like that okay and i'm going to copy this guy okay and like paste it here let's pass the id here okay and uh, id basically if i if i try to view product one i should the id should come as one back here and uh, here it should be product one something like that so i'm going to view a couple of products so i need that reusable method that's why i'm keeping it like this so view product one view product one one more time okay and view product five okay so this is how i am um, doing okay so now we sh it, it should have emitted three events now you know that the view product that and controller endpoint that works fine actually okay but how do i know that if it emitted the event successfully so you know the process we have already done as part of our the integration test earlier so at this point we have to consume that uh, that topic and see if they are if there are events actually okay so for that we have to create a receiver so create receiver for the product view events topic okay and uh, call receive okay if this guy returns string and object type because it does not know what object it is okay so we can use that that diamond operator to say that it's a product view event type okay so now if i do that yeah it knows okay okay so okay now let me call okay let me in receive then let's take three okay here we will be uh, we are having a flex then we have to use the step verifier nothing much step verifier 
create pass the flux and here we are going to say consume next with um, we will be getting a receiver record here okay and uh, we are going to do the assertion assertion oops sorry not like this okay assertion j unit assertion okay assertion assert equals okay the asset equals the very first event product id should be um, the r dot r dot value dot get product id okay so this is what we should be getting okay so then the next that is that should also be one okay then the next that should be five because that is how we have emitted um, we are viewing right we view this, we view this, we view this. So the order should be 115. In this order only, it should have emitted that event. Then after that, we should be getting complete signal because we are taking only three. Okay. So that's it. If this works, we are good. Okay. Let's run this. Wow. Actually, I couldn't believe. So. I'm going to do a simple, oh, actually it's there. I thought of searching. Okay, emitted event 115. Actually, okay, great guys. In the previous lecture, we were able to write the integration test and confirm that our application works great, right? Okay, but whatever we have done is mostly, there was like a happy path scenario. So what about the negative cases? So we have to test that as well. That is what will happen um, if I try to look view a product which is not present, let's say product ID 1000. So what will happen in this case? So what will happen here? And how do I know that that view, whatever I am trying to view, when I try to view product ID 1000, it would have not emitted any event. If it emits an event, that is wrong, right? So we have to verify that. So uh, let's imagine that I am trying to view product ID 1000, let's assume so, okay. So if I try to view 1000, if the ID is not present, the record is not present, it will be emitting an empty signal. So if it's empty, so it will be directly, all those things will be directly skipped. By looking at the code, I'm sure that it will not happen, okay. But let's, we have to have those kind of test cases as well, okay. So that's good to have. So let's validate that. So if map, if it's present, let's say response entity, okay. If it's not present, default if empty, response entity not found build, okay. So this no longer returns product DTO, instead it will be returning response entity of product DTO, okay. So now let's update our test uh, quickly. To validate that, uh, we can, I'm going to create another cup okay copy paste another method actually so i'm going to call this this is for success case and this is for error case okay actually we can also pass the expected status code for example 200 and all right here we can pass here we can simply say is equal to we can also validate the status code okay but i really do not like that way so 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 that um, I would like to keep this like this explicitly, okay? Is uh, 400 client error in this case, okay? So this will kind of look neat, readable actually, okay? So view product success. So let's change this to product success, product success, view product success, okay? Now in between, I'm going to say view product error, let's say 1000, okay? So this is what I am doing. So here I should be getting success response, event should be emitted. Success response, event should be emitted. Here I should be getting error response, this guy, okay? That is what I am expecting. Event should not be emitted. Again, success response, event should be emitted. Okay, now let's imagine that by mistake, we have emitted the event. Somehow introduced a bug, so it emitted an event. Now when you take three, right, you should be getting, you will be getting one, one, thousand actually okay that so here it will fail actually so if you are getting 115 that basically means that everything works fine actually okay 
so let's run this wow this is great guys hey guys now i'm going to uh, show you what i have done so far in the analytics service so the project dependencies wise it's exactly same as the product service whatever we have done okay so please ensure that the reactor kafka dependency you are adding and you do the maven reload without fail this this one thing okay and i have already shared the data sql copy that and paste it under source main resources here i'm creating the table and like this okay you can we can do n number of ways if you want to do sli slightly differently that's fine too okay and my application yaml it's like this bootstrap server some group id earliest key deserializer string deserializer value deserializer will be json deserializer i'm giving some group instance id i'm trusting all the packages okay and uh, application properties i give server.port7070 since i am i am using the default port 8080 here so i am giving 7070 but you can give any port okay so here as usual no change and let's go to the entity if you see the entity right uh, let, okay let's start from the view count the view count wise it's no change so we will be getting the integer product id okay so we will be keep on getting a lot of product ids so in our table what we will be uh, storing is for each product what is the count how many times the product was viewed this, this is what we are going to store in our table okay and we are going to store id the product id as the and the id field okay that is what we are going to keep now okay so i had told you right if you are going to set the id ourselves then it, we have to implement this interface persistable interface um, implement this interface so because of that i am having one transient is new field so since i'm using all our constructor the time along with the id count i will also be setting is new is true or false something like that okay so this we have to implement this in method as part of this method i'm saying if the id is null yeah it's a new record or if the is new field if it says true yeah that that time also we have to insert this that is what i'm saying okay okay then uh product trending dto that is this is something like a for each i mean the product id and the view count we are going to provide okay so probably l l let's come to that later um, let's take a look at the view repository so this is the repository product view count entity integer id okay so here i am having one method find top five okay find top five based on order by count descending okay so remember there, is, there are two buys okay find top five by order by count descending okay okay so here we will be getting the top five products based on the order count okay then we extract that information and put it under in uh, in the dto okay this is what we are doing and we will be returning in the list of product trending dto like this okay uh, as a server sunday using server sunday events so once we finish the service layer we will wire this okay okay so i think i have covered almost everything okay except the config so the config as usual we create receiver option i i wire the kafka properties build consumer property i am not using the info header so value default type is product view count and i am giving this subscription um, the topic name okay and here we create the consumer template okay guys now let's work on the service so first um, we will be receiving those events right we have to consume those events so let's start working on that so i'm going to create uh, something i'm going to create something called a product view event consumer so that was having producer now here we are having a product 
view event consumer okay so here we will be wiring reactive kafka consumer template string product view event template okay i'm going to say as usual all org constructor so this guy will be happy and here we are also going to um, wire the product view repository product view repository repository okay then let's have one method public wire subscribe something like that okay so here we can um, use the template to receive all the events okay so here you will be getting uh, let's say do on next here you will be getting all the events right okay Re receiver record okay now for an extremely high throughput application right so you will be getting lots and lots of events okay you will be keep on getting events now let's imagine that you have to insert via in, insert into the database okay just i'm saying okay so now instead of doing like this instead of repository insert something like that actually you cannot do because it's a reactive type so you cannot use do on next but the concept wise instead of inserting for each and every record because it's a network call it's unnecessary so what i would say is that we can buffer actually okay that is we can buffer certain items we can do things in batches if you want okay so that will kind of increase improve the latency okay uh, when I say improve the latency, it will kind of reduce the latency. That's what I'm trying to say, actually. So, okay. So, for the buffer, right? So, what I'm going to do is that I'm, there is something called buffer timeout. That is, I would like to collect 1000 events, okay, with the duration of like one seconds. So, either give me 1000 events, or if you have collected only 100 events, but uh, one second passed, just give me 100, okay? Whichever comes first either one second or thousand whichever comes first just whatever the items you have just give it to me pass it okay so now it will be kind of buffer the item and it will give thousand items in batches something like that you're getting right so that we can process everything as one single batch and insert okay so this will kind of help with the, the network calls actually okay so now at this point we can this process the list actually okay so we have thousand items to process again it not doesn't have to be exactly thousand items it could be like only two item it could be only one item okay it all depends okay so uh, now instead of processing here so we are going to have a separate um, processing method okay so private wired a process method which is going to accept this so list of receiver record of string product view event so this is what we are going to accept until we are we can call this events this is the events these are the events we have received actually now if the product id 10 if it was viewed 100 times then we can have 100 records in the list so what i am thinking is that we can process the okay we can use java stream okay we can map okay we can do a map okay so okay our dot value dot get product id okay so now what i am thinking is that we can basically collect um, how many items are there for each product id okay we can group by so that we can count how many times uh, product id 100 was viewed so we can get the count okay so that is the idea so collect collectors dot um, grouping by okay so group by product id so we already have the product id that's what we are receiving in the pipeline so function identity okay so group by the product id and okay so after group by what are we going to do so we are going to count collectors dot counting okay so now we can collect that 
e we can give some name okay i'm calling this events map okay so if you check the type right it's a map of integer and the value is long so the key is product id okay the um, the integer that is a product id and the long the value is how many times it, it is there in the in the list hey guys in the previous lecture we had created this event map based on the events okay so basically that will give us a product id and how many times it was viewed that count okay for that batch okay the list okay so now what we are going to do is that using the map we are going to get those keys okay product ids we are going to query the database for these product ids what is the result you have in database okay something like that we are going to ask database okay by using the repository let's imagine that repository returns like this that is 10 was viewed three times product 8 was viewed two times and i do not have product id 2 in the database okay in the table it returns like this okay so what should we do now okay so in that case the product 2 was never viewed so we have to take 2 was viewed five times right so we have to insert that as it is okay and 10 was viewed 172 times the events now database has it was viewed three times okay so we have to append these like add so 10 is 175 update and 8 is 2 8 is 122 here so we are going to update as 8 is 122 something like this 122 so 122 something like that okay you're getting right so this is what we have to do so this map we have created this map we have to get it from the database then we have to update then we will be inserting so let's start with the this dot repository dot find all by id so this accepts an um, iterable uh, yeah, integer id so we can say events map um, key set we can give all those keys the keys are product ids okay so now this will give us the flux of um, um, list of product view count okay sorry it will give us the flux of product view count actually because it's because of the buffer timeout so this is a flux of product view count this is what we will be getting but we want a uh, we want a map okay so that it will be easy for us to work with so we are going to convert that to a mono of map so that's basically easy actually so there is something called collect map so the collect map how you are going to um, how do you want to create a map based on what so what is the key the key here is uh, a product view count get id so using the um, the product view count id give me a map so now this will give us the mono of if i say do on next it will give us map of integer and the object product view count object okay so this will kind of um, convert like this okay so but there is one problem if the collect map method right let's imagine that okay so what if there are no records that is it, it the database is come clean state okay this is now now only we are starting so what if there are no records in that case what it will do is that it will be emitting empty signal nothing will execute and it will the whole thing will skip so we do not want this to skip because for the very first time it will be empty that time whatever we have the events map right we want to insert those as they are now so we do not want this to be skipped so in that case if it's default if empty we are going to say that collections dot empty map okay so we want to continue the pipeline actually so we do not want to skip actually okay so now at this point we are going to get one map either empty map or some map from um, the, the table okay so we are going to continue from here so now we have two map one is database map the other one is the event map we have to merge uh, update the view count accordingly okay so i am going to ha have another method so private void uh, update view count let's keep it like that okay so update view count so here first i am going to get a map of integer product view count okay like this 
this is db map okay this is what we have get the from this guy okay the other one is this guy so here what it has is that map of integer long okay so let's call this event map okay so now we can also have in integer product id okay so now for this product id we have to update the the product view count and details okay this is what we are going to do so db map get or default okay get or default because the db map could be empty right so let's use get or default if it's there we are going to get the product view count object if it's not there we have to create one new product view count object because this is the first time so since it is the first time what is the product id the product id this one okay okay and what is the count the count the database we are going to simulate that it's zero because it's never viewed and we are going to insert the record for the first time so the boolean the, the entity right i'm going to keep this as a true okay it's a uh, it's a long so let's keep it like that so now we will be having one product view count object okay product view count okay we are getting a one product view count okay so now then set count what is the set we have to set the count count here okay so pvc get count plus event map get product id okay so return we can return pvc okay so let's change here basically i am merging the results nothing else if you notice i am getting one database map even map i am having one product id for the product id what is the product view count object if it is there in the database give that otherwise create one brand new view count with the zero okay now set the count the set count right if it's the for the first time it will return zero so now the even map whatever the result it gives we will be setting it here if it was existing record it will return like 5 10 whatever it is then we are going to update the new new views okay so now we have updated the the count the number of times it was viewed now we are returning the product view count object let's call this method from here okay so this is a db map so the db map we are going to call this um okay the events map okay events map key set dot stream okay so then we are going to use map okay so here for in this stream i'm using map so here this will be giving us the product id okay so here in the from the key set i'm going to get the product id so now i'm going to call update view count i'm going to call this i'm going to pass the db map and i'm going to pass the events map and i'm going to pass the product id okay so collect list so now this at this point i will be having a list of okay at this point i will be having a list of if you see i am getting a list of product view count updated product view count so now if i have a list right at this point i can simply save it in the database okay i can simply save it in the database this dot repository dot save all i can simply pass the list that's it i can simply do like this so let's use method reference okay but uh, since it, it returns uh, the flux right and this is a mono right we have to use flat map many because a mono becomes flux actually okay then that's it at this point 
we can we can simply just finish it okay basically we are done so let's return mon of void couple of more things before i say that it's fully done i added this logger so please add that then particularly in the reactive pipeline right it's very difficult to debug if you do not have the do on error all those statement okay because the error right will go via pipeline and uh, you we have to um, print it otherwise we will not be seeing that okay so uh, here i'm going to say as part here let's print that log dot error ex get message okay so we can print it like this also we have processed but where are we going to acknowledge the message actually okay we have to acknowledge somewhere right so here this is what we want once this is done then as part of the do on complete right we can um, we can acknowledge actually okay so as part of the do on complete i'm going to do that so are we let's say here i'm receiving thousand events i'm going to acknowledge each and everything no i do not have to if you remember acknowledging the last message right that's fine for us okay so i'm going to say uh, oh not events math okay events get give me the last message because it's a list so give me the last message whatever you have okay and we are going to say that receiver offset acknowledge okay so now this looks uh, okay to me okay so okay now let's come here and let's pass that list to the process method and let's make this as a flat map okay so now in case of error everything it will be in the pipeline now we can do retry all those stuff if you think if you want here okay we can do all the retry here without affecting this main pipeline okay so here um, what else we have to do so that's it at this point we can simply subscribe here and uh, again if you want to add retry just for this here separately we can do that as well then just let's add the the service annotation we can also create the bean the kafka consumer config but we can use we can also use the post construct so that it will be automatically uh, subscribed okay so yeah that's it guys hey guys in the last two lectures we were processing all the incoming events and we are populating or updating our uh, table okay so now we are going to uh, work on uh, getting the the top five products and we have to broadcast right so let's create a separate service class for that and i'm going to call this product trending uh, broadcast service something like that okay sorry about the lengthy name but you can always change it okay so it's going to be a service of course so here i'm going to i need the the repository so product view repository repository let's keep it like that okay and uh, what else i need i need one flux actually so private uh, flux i'll tell you why i'm creating here actually so list of product trending dto so let's call this trends okay so now okay here it's not all org i'm going to keep this required org constructor or basically i would like to auto wire only this this is something like we are going to initialize here actually okay so i'm going to say private void init something like that this is it, it's going to be invoked as part of the post construct okay so uh the idea here is um okay let me do this so that it's clear this start repository here we are getting all the top five products okay so now uh, we are going to create a flex 
and we are going to initialize this okay then when someone asks for it we will be just simply returning this flux because this is not going to be changing based on the person okay this is not a user specific information this is more of a generic information same information for everybody okay so instead of creating a new flux for everyone we are sharing the same flux with everyone okay uh, something like that so this is what this is why we are doing this way so here we will be getting a product view count okay the product view count i am going to convert that to a new product trending dto so pvc get id and pvc get count okay so using the product id get count we are passing that uh, converting that to a trending DTO. Also, we are saying that top five. Okay, so um, if we have only two records, we will be getting only two records. Maximum, only we will be getting five. Okay, we know that, and we would like to return as a list. Currently, it's a flux of PVC, so we are going to say collect list. Okay, so the, this will become a mono of list of product trending DTO. So the, this list, this is what we would like to return actually. Okay, so the problem with this, the collect list, right? If it's an empty, let's imagine that our database, uh, our table does not have any record. Let's imagine like that. In that case, right, it will be emitting empty signal, right? The collect list will give us empty list actually. We do not want empty list. So I'm going to say filter is empty okay so i do not want empty list so this exclamation i do not want to write like this so basically I'm, I, I like to use predicate not so so that i can use method reference like this that is this should not be empty that is what i'm trying to say okay and at this point i will be having a mono of okay so it, at this point if i'm going to get something i will be having a list and which will be having some records for sure okay because we have already added the filter okay but it's a mono we want to keep on doing this periodically okay so i'm going to repeat repeat this so the repeat this uh, basically uh, it will it will which will give us a flux so i'm going to say that l delay elements duration of seconds three Okay, so that basically means that as and when this publisher inside this publisher a value is emitted after every three seconds, this will trigger the upstream to emit more items. Okay, okay, so then if you notice now as part of the okay now the it's no longer mono of list it becomes flux flux of list because we are keep on repeating. Okay, there is one more thing I would like to do. There is a very good chance that Let's imagine that uh, it's some kind of midnight, you, the users, nobody is viewing our products, okay? But this will keep on running every three seconds. And uh, there is a very good chance that the top five, right? We, it, it might, we might be getting the same result again and again. So there is, we do not want actually in, this, in those cases. So what we are saying is distinct um, until change. That is, the, what we are doing here is, emit item only if if it's kind of different from the last uh, item okay so otherwise there is nothing to emit that's what i'm we are saying here okay okay then what else then that's it this is the flux guys okay we we can simply assign that to this dot friends okay so we have created one flex so one thing what we can do here is we can we can use cache Okay, with the last history of one, so that uh, we we give this the cached version to everyone. Okay, so we are not creating a new publisher for each and every um, request which comes to us, um, because there could be multiple people who would be looking for this trend. Okay, so we do not want to create a new publisher for everyone. So we are caching this and we are give the cached version to others. Then we can have one getter method to expose the uh, flux of list of product trending dto let's call this get trends you can simply say return this trends okay this is simple right 
and this is what our controller needs so let's go and fix it there okay so i'm going to say private final product trending broadcast service broadcast service let's keep it like that i already have all our constructor okay so it will be auto wired for me so trend okay here i have to say this dot broadcast service get trends okay so that's it guys hey guys now let's work on creating the integration test for our analytics service so what i have done is i simply copied whatever we have in the, the product series right i simply copied and pasted here nothing else okay so the same content okay our abstract test because same topic okay so now here for the analytics service here i'm going to we do not need this and this, this is going to extend abstract um, integration test and here also we are we need the web client so i'm going to say auto configure web test client and i can auto wire uh, private web test client client like this and i'm going to say uh, trending test i'm going to give some name okay so this is how i would like to test so i'm going to emit uh, events okay like as a producer so we are going to emit events in the test now our analytics service application right that will be consuming events and we can uh, verify via the trending endpoint okay so we should be seeing all those um, the products whatever we have viewed right those products we should be able to view uh, via that trending endpoint so that is the idea okay so uh, in order to simulate some trending events right so i'm going to create one simple method which will be giving us a list of a product view event for the for the given product id okay so let me put this okay so create event so for this product id how many event you want so give the count okay so return in int stream okay in stream range closed one to count so guys okay one to count then map to object so we are going to create those many product view event product view event for which accepts the product id so pass the product id and collect to list that's it so now let's here here let's create those events okay so flex just okay inside the just um, i'm going to create a list of events um, it will be like for example product view product two right it was viewed two times okay something like that okay and i'm going to keep it like a product one it was viewed one time and a product six it was viewed three times oops i need to add this come on okay and product four it was viewed two times let's keep it like that okay product five it was viewed five times okay and product four again it was viewed two times product six it was viewed three times something like that basically one one two two uh four four times five five times six six times i would like to keep it like that okay so you know what three is missing let's add that as well okay product three was viewed three times okay let's keep it like that okay so we have a lot of events here in the flex we are getting uh if you say we are getting a flex of list actually okay flex of list um i'm going to change that to flex of the product view event so for that what i can do here is i can use a flat map and i can simply say flex from iterable so this will be converting uh, a list and it will flatten everything so that i will be getting a view events okay now i can use a map wait this guy starts here sorry about that okay so okay now i will be getting um, event the 
the actual product view event now i can change the to a sender record this to send we do not have sender record okay so we don't we have the sender record the sender record product view events topic and uh, the key key is e dot get product id to string okay and the value is the event okay so now we have the uh, even flux okay then we have to create the sender and send this okay so let's create the sender this dot create uh, this dot create sender okay so then uh, send okay let me change this will be kind of object type that's how it will return by default so we can say product view event that sender okay now the send can accept sender record of uh, product view event so we can simply pass the events okay so this will give us the result flux actually okay we can keep it like that result flux so at this point we everything is a publisher nothing will is invoked okay so we have to subscribe somebody has to subscribe so the subscriber is going to be the step verifier so the test the step verifier dot create pass the result to flags and uh, here we will be getting uh, results right we can also use then operator okay 6 8 13 15 21 okay so we can expect 21 results here okay so then verify complete okay so if if this are all done if we can emit this all these even successfully we should be getting 21 results and a complete signal actually at this point we are able to emit events as a producer to our application now application has to process and it will give us the the top five products as the via the trending endpoint so if we can verify that then basically it works okay hey guys now let's continue our integration test we are almost there okay so now we have emitted the events we have to verify via our the trending endpoint so for that we have our web test client so this dot client it's a get request you know and the uri is going to be trending okay so this is great and but remember that it's a um, it's a even stream you're getting right so the, the, we have to explicitly say that accept uh, media type text even stream we have to say this okay um, then everything else is same exchange so okay we are going to uh, expect a result in the in the list format it's a list of product trending ddo so we have to use the new parameterized type reference actually okay so we have to use it like that so that it will come convert that to that type actually okay so product trending ddo okay something like this actually no it's not like that it's a it's a list of product trending ddo this is why we are doing this way okay okay because it's a list type sometimes you are expected a type right it could be complex map of this and that something like this so this is why we are using this okay okay so then get response body we want a flex okay we are not going to directly validate uh, using the json path as we did in the this okay so this is more of a i would like to get this as a flex and i would like to validate this okay so get response body so this will be giving me uh, as a, as a flex actually okay it's a flex of exchange result this guy is a flex of exchange result you can see i want to see convert that to a flex of uh, flex of event something like that okay but remember this the sse right the server sent event right this is not complete it's going to be uh, the connection will be open and via that open connection it will be keep on emitting events so this will never complete actually so i am interested in only the one event the very first event i am going to receive so i'm changing that to mono okay just give me one i'm not going to wait forever okay so that's what we are saying 
because the typical get request and all when you send a request you will get the response that's it it's done but this guy it, it will never done because of this it's even stream okay so basically we are changing that to uh, flex to mono then we can bring the step verifier and that's it create mono so now uh, consume next with here we will be getting a list of product trending dto so we have to do some assertion we can simply say whether the list contains five items but uh, let's do assertion later okay so then verify complete okay so this is what we want to do uh, okay the assertion part i'm going to write that separately because it's we have few some things to do here actually so validate result something like that so here we'll be getting a list of product trending dto and a list let's keep it like that what is wrong here oh sorry about that okay so validate result okay so now our list size right it should be uh, sorry guys i do this every single time assertions okay j unit assertion okay assert equals so our list size should be five okay and if i know that then if this is good then it passes okay and if you run if you notice we view we view product one one time product two two times three three times four four times something like that okay when you based on the count when you sort right so we will be getting like six five four three two and one should not be here in the list okay so these are the products we should be getting in this order and we do not we will not be getting one so assertion assert uh, equals the very okay the six list dot the first index right okay so the product we count what is the product id that should be six and the get view count number of times it was viewed that should also be six because we viewed three times three times okay so it would, should become six okay similarly I'm not going to do for each and everything. So this is six six, and this should be two two. Okay, so zero one two three four. Okay, four four. Okay, let's keep it like that. And this should be two. This should be two. Product ID should be two. View count should also be two. Also, we are not expecting product ID one in our in the list. We should not be getting. So assertions assert true list dot stream dot uh, none match basically we do not we are not expecting product id one okay so p dot get product id equals one okay so we, there should not be any record matching the product id that's what i'm saying that by none match okay so now we can simply pass this this dot validate result now verify complete okay guys now we can run this so let me run this and see wow so it passes okay so the three seconds is mainly because of the delay okay so we actually we do that you know that okay so then I'm going to intentionally change this to two to confirm if it's failing. Okay, it fails, but why it fails? Okay, true, false. Okay, in this particular line. Okay, so great, guys. Hey guys, now we are going to have the demo. Okay, so let's please let's go to our Kafka container. I have actually deleted all the the local directory, the volume mapping directory. So I'm starting from the clean state. Okay, so I'm going to create the the topic, product, view, events, 
topic I'm creating. Okay, the partition replication factor uh, doesn't really matter for this demo. Okay, also I'm not I am having only this single node cluster here anyway. So, but it's up to you. If you want to have it, you can have it actually. So I'm creating the product view events topic. Once the Kafka server is up and running, the topic is ready. Now we can start our application. As you know, my product service is listening on port 8080 and here I'm using 7070 for analytic service. But feel free to use any port you like. That doesn't really matter. Okay, so let me start the product service application. Okay, so this seems to have started and let me start the analytic service as well. Is it failing? Oh no, okay, it has started. Then open your favorite browser. Uh, here I am going to access the, the trending endpoint, localhost uh, 7070, that is where it's running. And the trending endpoint, if I am going to um, if I hit enter. So here it will look like it's kind of spinning or hanging, but it's not like that. It's basically it's a server send events. So as and when the data comes right, um, it will show here. Okay, so no worries. Um, for now we have not viewed any products, so we will not get anything. So product one, I am going to view that now, and let's see what happens. I'm getting the product response. So here say it says that product one has view count one that's cool right so okay let me view this couple of times okay it's three okay remember that it's not really slow it's mainly because we are repeating every three seconds okay if you if you do not like it you can always kind of adjust the time it's completely up to you okay so this is cool okay now i'm going to view product id five i'm getting five so that should also come here. So product one three times, product five one time. Okay. So let me view this more time. So see if this is fast. Okay. Now if you see here, seventeen times I have viewed five and uh, product ID one three times. It works great, right? As and when I was refreshing the browser, so it emits all those events, right? So we are logging that. You know that. And the analytic service here, there are no issues, so which is good. So at this point, I'm going to stop this application. And I have already shared the static index HTML, if you remember. Okay, so I want us to copy those directories and paste it under source main resources. Please paste it under a correct project. Okay, so I have shared two. Um, index HTML. So one is one for product service, the other one for um, analytic service. So let's do that. So I have pasted those index HTML like this source main resources statics index HTML. Please ensure that you are seeing product service for product service. Okay. Um, and uh, I also use the relative path. So irrespective of the port you are using, it should work. Assuming you also have the same product those endpoints okay so here I'm not doing much I'm also logging the, the response in the console so if you want to see the JSON response you have to check the console basically I'm trying to simulate a lot of product uh, view that's it okay probably you will you will be seeing in the demo what I'm trying to do okay and uh, similarly for here analytic service if you click on it you should be seeing this analytic service okay ensure that and uh, here I'm going to have one chart and I'm using the trending endpoint again relative path. So even irrespective of the port we are using, it should work. So at this point, right, we should be good. We can start both these applications actually. Okay, so we can start this application. And since we use in memory database, uh, we would have lost all the data. So we are going to start from scratch one more time. No big deal. So uh, Let's go to localhost 8080. Here I want to access the index HTML. So localhost 8080. This is what I would like to access. Okay. So this is our product service. And uh, here we have lots and lots of buttons actually. Okay. So basically I do not want to change the URL. So if I want to simply click, click on the button so that it will simulate that I am viewing the product. Okay. So that's what I have done. 
I know that this is stupid, but it will kind of um, just to uh, click on various buttons so that we can view those products. That's it. Okay, quickly. And here we will be having the chart. Okay, so here we are end users, and this side we are the the product team. Okay, we are going to see which products are being viewed uh, often, something like that. Okay, so currently it's empty. Okay, so now let's imagine that I'm viewing product five. I click on it. it basically, I have viewed the product. Now, if you see, that is a trending product now. This is cool, right? Okay, if you want to see the response, check the console log for this. Okay, this is what I said. Now, if I view product four, that will also be another one of it will become one of the trending product now okay so basically both product has one one view actually okay something like that so now i can simulate more views for five if i, if I click on it that basically simulates more views so it kind of keeps on updating which is trending okay something like that so i can three i can view see view two and i can view one so we can get all these products okay this is cool, right? So I, I keep on viewing five. Okay, let's imagine like that. Okay, I keep on viewing five. So now I have viewed like 30 times. Wow, 31. Okay. So now, okay. Four, 66, 58, few times. Now, if you see, it's kind of updates. But remember that based on our implementation, it will be showing, showing only the top five products. Okay, so if you want to bring one product into the chart, right? What is the minimum number? The pro one. So at least you have to make two clicks uh, some product. Okay, so only then that will come. If I say 38 two times, okay, then that 38 appears actually. Okay. Okay. So now if you want to bring some product into this chart, you have to make minimum three clicks, something like that. So yeah. Okay. So this is how it works and. If you see, our part analytics works great, guys. There are some improvements we can do um, in our the product, even consumer and the broadcast service. That is, um, that is, here, I am intentionally delaying three seconds and I am periodically querying. Even though most cases this is fine, okay, this is totally fine for the most cases. Um, what I would say is that instead of periodically querying just query only if the product view even consumer has recently updated the table otherwise we do not have to query you are getting what i am saying right let's imagine that the product view even consumer has not received any data for the past 12 hours let's assume so okay in that case What's the point of asking for, hey, getting, uh, querying our table for like for three seconds? Because nothing would have changed for the past 12 hours, right? Okay, so we are going to query only if the event consumer has processed something. Okay, so this concept, right, this, right, this is called companion flux. Um, that is, only if, if it's going to emit a data, then this will also emit the data how it will emit so basically we will be repeating so we will be sending a re repeat signal because of that it repeats so this is called the companion flex so the, the point here is we can give we can put we can add one flex here so how we can add here right we can create okay private final sings mini okay so let's say it doesn't really matter okay i'm going to say some integer but this is doesn't really matter so sync sync dot many dot unicast on back brusher buffer okay and i'm also going to create a flux this is just a simple idea okay so just i'm trying to show here okay if you really think that it, it might be useful if you think that if, if it's it's useful okay so something like that okay now where we are processing this is where we are processing right so i'm going to say do on complete okay so whenever we complete i am going to say sync try emit next i'm going to simply drop one the value does not really matter you can put whatever you want this doesn't really matter i am just notifying that yeah 
I have I have processed something. Okay, so now we are going to expose this flux uh, for others to use it if they want. Okay, so we are going to flux of integer. Uh, let's call this companion flux. Okay, return this dot flex okay so now i am going to wire this here so private final uh, product view event consumer okay consumer something like that now i'm going to remove this guy and i'm going to call this consumer companion flex okay so now because of this what will happen is this will refresh only if it has processed uh, the data okay so let's try this okay let's restart our application and let's try now i have restarted i have refreshed the browsers okay so here we do not have any data because of the in memory we have lost everything that's fine we can start from scratch and here we will not be seeing three seconds delay but there will be still one second delay that's mainly because of the buffer timeout okay if you want to remove that you can also remove that everything will be super fast in that case okay so now as usual i'm going to view product five okay now if you see there is no one um, three seconds delay okay so it, things will be actually faster here if you notice okay because it's like everything is like one second now okay because as and when things are um, emitted right now it um, it emits the um, it drops that in the sink the product event consumer that event triggers uh, the refresh actually okay so let's say suddenly somebody starts viewing 44 a lot now the 44 should also kind of here okay comes here so it's kind of quickly refreshes okay something like that so if i keep on viewing 53 that also makes to that list actually okay okay guys in this section i'm going to quickly explain kafka security in a high level mostly this would be set up by the kafka administrators but if you know this in a high level it's good okay we might hear these two terms a lot the SASL, SASL and JAAS. So the SASL stands for Simple Authentication and Security Layer, a mechanism for adding authentication support to a protocol. That's what it is in a high level. It supports a few mechanisms like Plain, LDAP, OAuth. There are few okay so but this will give you an idea okay the plane is basically like simple username and a password authentication something like that okay and the j a s means the java authentication and authorization service basically just java apis to determine the user privileges check if the user permission user has enough permission to do that action or not something like that throughout this course um we have one application and we had one kafka server our application was contacting kafka server by using the the host local host and the port directly okay it was producing and consuming events okay and our communication was not encrypted we were using plain text if you remember and we also did not have any credentials okay now what we are going to do is that we are going to bring this the sasl sasl okay along with the plain text so our communication will still not be encrypted that is fine for now okay uh, for learning purposes I, it will not be encrypted but kafka will require some username password authentication some kind of authentication otherwise it will not allow the application to produce or consume okay so this is what we are going to set up now okay i have already shared um one docker compose file with all the required properties okay so let's explore that i have already shared the kafka security sasl plane okay so um, copy that and paste it under workspace so let's explore this so here we have one docker compose yaml and i have some one kafka topic that's not super important i'll come to that later and we have few properties okay so now let's explore the docker compose yaml 
Docker Compose YAML wise, it's a uh, everything is same. Okay, it's Kafka. I don't want to change it to Kafka one. Okay, so image wise, it's Vince Docker Kafka. The same image, same container name, ports, everything is same. Cluster ID same. Okay, I have added one environment um, variable here to tell Kafka server saying that I have the the username password configuration in this path so when you start read this configuration file and enable security for me that is what we are saying okay so nothing much here and we have few properties uh, i am mapping the server properties as usual but instead of keeping this as a server property i am keeping this i changed the name to security properties okay so but nothing else it can be server properties as well just a file name okay and i also have one more jaws config and i am just keep keeping that in this location this is what i am asking um, to kafka server to read when it starts so we have two files okay as usual this is uh, the kafka log directory we know this and there is also something called consumer properties and i am keeping it under our work directory again this is not super important the super important things are these two and this path this this information okay when the server starts we have to give okay so let's explore this one by one let's go to server properties so this is server properties if you see the basically same concept we have already seen this same thing but if you notice the listener right i am using instead of plain text okay we used to have plain text before now instead of plain text now we are adding and the SASA, SASL, simple authentication and the security layer. Basically, we are enabling security. But remember, our communication is not encrypted. It's still plain text. But we need username password to talk to the listener. Okay. So basically, this is what we are saying. We can have multiple listener, and for this listener, uh, we are using um, uh, authentication. And we are saying that control is, uh, listener name is controller, advertised listener is uh, this for communication, and the inter broker listener name is SASL plain text. That's what we are saying. Okay. Okay. Everything else remains same. We have to add this because we are enabling security now. Okay. So SASL enabled mechanism is plain. This, now, this could be commu um, confusing. This plain is different from this plain. Okay okay so here as you know um sasl we have multiple mechanism right uh, plain uh, ldap oauth so which mechanism we are using here i'm saying that i'm using the, the plain mechanism this guy has so simple username password authentication that's what i mean here the plain mean the communication is not encrypted that's what it means okay so i want that to be very clear uh, if it's confusing sorry about that but this is how the kafka does things okay okay so this is how we are um, enabling security but th th that's it if you ask me like this no we still have to know what is the where is the username password all those stuff so that is where we are giving and uh, that is what we are giving here in the jaws conf config file Okay, so we are telling Kafka server saying that, hey, Kafka server, enable security. These are the username, password, credentials you have to have. Okay, so, okay, so this is what we are saying in this file. Okay, so here we are, we see multiple kind of username, password, credentials here. Okay, so what are these? Okay, as you know, in the Kafka cluster, there could be multiple communication going on. Okay. Um, brokers might want to talk to each other and the client might want to talk to a broker the client is something like our java application whatever we develop okay that is the client okay so client wants to talk to broker and one broker might want to talk to another broker okay something like that okay this communication could be like this okay and client wants to talk to broker okay like this okay let's imagine that this guy we we enable security here here uh, okay something like this so if it says that it has enabled security okay and we need a username password credentials then this this guy has to have some credentials so that using that it can talk to broker right similarly this guy has to have some credentials so that it can talk to this broker right so that's how it works right okay so 
what it means what this means is that this is for outgoing communication for this broker that is when this broker wants to talk to another broker it has to give you say it has to use username password to talk to this broker so it will be using username and a password using that it will be contacting um, another broker using this credentials okay for outgoing okay now for the incoming how it will validate okay so this is what we are using this is where we are using this okay that is what we are saying is hey kafka broker if somebody comes with the username client and the client secret password as a client secret allow them so this guy will be using username as client and the password as client secret okay so if if it comes with those credentials this broker will say oh yeah i, I have that in my configuration you are you are having correct username password credentials so i'm going to allow so basically it will allow okay like this similarly this guy wants to talk to this guy it will come with the admin and the secret with that credentials since it sees that it will allow that communication something like that okay so this is why we have this kind of setup it could be confusing but since we have we are talking about multiple communication here okay so this is for outgoing these are all for incoming again it can be anything i can even say you know kind of a client secret something like something like that so in my java application i have to use username as vinod and i have to use this as a password okay so this is what um, this is how we configure this now let's start this uh, docker container let's do the docker compose up and uh, let's try to create a topic and see how it goes now i am accessing the I have accessed the Docker container. I have already shared one file, 01 Kafka topic. Okay, so um, basically you can copy the very first um, the topic create command. Basically Kafka topic, bootstrap server localhost 9092, topic order events create. Okay, this is what I am saying, nothing much. If you hit enter, and you might not see, see anything. If you check the log, right, if you see, right, it keeps on running, it says that failed authentication, it says something, okay, it's failed authentication, etc. So let's copy the second command, this guy, okay, so let's copy this, okay, let's kill this, okay, let's clear this, and if you notice, I am having consumer.properties in my work directory, okay, so this is what I am using, let's come to that what i have in the consumer properties i'll show that later basically now i am passing the consumer properties and i am order even topic create basically same stuff just i have added this extra information now if i say i can create topic and if i say delete i can delete topic okay so if i say create one more time i can create topic okay so basically everything works just to find okay so what do i have in the consumer property so if i if i check consumer properties basically right remember this this the kafka topic right now our terminal is basically client we are contacting the broker so we have to have credentials so only then it will work so we are passing the credential information like this my username is client my password is client secret okay if you remember this is what we got given right in the broker Basically, this is what I'm saying. My username is client. My password is this. Okay. So, I would like to create a topic. So, using this configuration, it, it, it try, is trying to create a, a topic. Because of that, the broker allows. For the first time, it was not having those credentials. Because of that, it failed. Okay. So, now we have created the topic, right? Can we produce and consume event? If yes, then how am I going to, where am I going to update the credentials in my application? Okay, so let's see that as well. Let's come back to our reactive Kafka playground project. I have created a new package section 18 and whatever we had in the section 2 Kafka producer, right? I simply copied and pasted here. Okay, so, okay. Now I'm going to run this. It will not work, uh, but this is what I wanted to show. Okay, so let me stop. Uh, it's basically it will not work because we have enabled authentication okay so basically the server will reject the request so that's what it's going on okay so now 
if you remember it used to work just fine now it's not working so let's enable the authentication so what we have to do basically the same stuff the consumer properties whatever you are having right the consumer properties so we have to provide all those information here actually the first one is the sassel mechanism okay so we can give that by a sassel configs sassel mechanism there should be something called the sassel mechanism okay it's here okay so it should be plain okay that we have to give then the security protocol okay the security pro pro protocol is present under common client configs security protocol okay security protocol config that is going to be sassel plain text okay so this is as a um, mechanism this is kafka security protocol okay so then we have to give the the jaws config sassel configs okay so we have to say as a sl the jaws config okay so this is what we have to give okay so whatever we have right in the in the file just to copy everything and paste it here okay so that is exactly what we are going to do okay so copy that whole content okay and paste it here like this so it will automatically add this everything so that's exactly what we want so including this okay remember this is also super important add this as well okay we have to have this okay now let's run this and see wow now i am able to produce without any issues okay so what about spring what will happen if i am using spring even when we use spring right so basically we have to provide this all this configuration here only okay so as part of the additional properties for the jaws configuration etc okay so this is how the spring also works so let me come back here and uh, let me change the password to client secret one something like this okay i have given wrong password so what will happen in this case let's run this okay so again if you notice okay let me stop this and it says that failed authentication okay so invalid username password also if you notice all this configuration right these are all not specific to producer these are like generic common client configuration or security configuration so it's going to be exactly same the format for the consumer as well okay so just okay let me correct the password this is wrong you know that okay so let me copy these three okay these three properties i'm copying i'm going to some consumer okay so let let me come here and paste it okay so okay oops yeah this one okay so now uh let me run this and see it should be able to consume all those events the producer produced okay so it works okay hey guys in the previous lecture we were talking about sassel with the plain text so how can i have security or encryption between the client server communication so how can i have ssl so let's quickly discuss how the ssl works in a super high level okay and let's go from there let's imagine that you and me we would like to start uh we you and me we own this domain mybank.com and we would like to secure our website so that all our clients they feel safe um and they think that the information is secure okay so okay and there is something called a certificate authority It's, for example somebody like godaddy so they are like a certificate authority there are several certificate authorities let's imagine that we have one certificate authority okay Uh, and they have their private key of course super secret and they have their public key okay okay so now we will be having our private key and we will be having our public key okay okay so what we will do is that using our private key we will be asking certificate authority saying that hey certificate authority i own this domain i would like to secure my website can you 
um, certify my request so basically we will be sending a request okay certificate signing request CSR we will be asking these guys to approve the request so using their private key they will approve the request and they will give us the certificate okay now we will be having the SSL certificate and in our machine um, okay in the server let's assume so okay now we have millions of clients okay so each and every machine um, right the clients machine right like your machine my machine okay they are we all have the certificate authorities public key in our machine for example if you go and check ubuntu's in in this path you can see those certificates actually okay mm, the keys actually okay public keys okay okay so now when they type https mybank.com what will happen is uh, we will we will have to provide the ssl certificate we will be presenting the ssl certificate okay so they can confirm that yes we are the one who has the mybank.com certificate issued by the certificate authority so yes it's safe for me to talk to this server okay so okay and we will also be sharing the public key okay so using the public key what they what they can do is they can encrypt the request okay and no one can de decrypt the request in between okay in order to decrypt we have to have the private key of course we already have the private key in our machine so we should be able to decrypt okay but no one can intercept the request and uh, they cannot decrypt the um, the request okay so this is how we secure the communication okay great but the problem in our local uh, testing is that there is no certificate authority so we have to act like a certificate authority okay and we have to have this public key and here we have to have the private key so that we can set up and see how it works okay so but no worries this is super simple i'm going to give you uh, the, the certificates okay for our testing and i am also going to share one script which can create these certificates for you if you want to uh, test um, yourself okay and in our case the domain is going to be localhost okay and we do not want this domain so we are going to use localhost as our domain now let's come back to our workspace i have already shared the 06 kafka security ssl ssl so yes let's check this one by one okay so here as usual here we have same docker compose file everything is almost the same except that now i have one new volume mapping for the certs local certs okay so i'm mapping with the container search path okay okay so if you see uh here let's uh check the this is the script i have used to generate the certificate okay so uh let me explain this one by one first we are creating certificate authority we are creating one private key public key for us so we are the uh, certificate authority okay so the root certificate this is the public certificate every um, anyone can have this but this is private key only the certificate authority should have that okay something like that okay now we also uh, this is for certificate authority now this is for mybank.com okay so we are creating the key store i am calling this kafka key store dot jks okay and, uh, and the password i am keeping is change it something like that okay and uh, okay so i am creating um one key store okay so here this is where i am creating the certificate signing request okay so using my key store right i'm creating the, the certificate signing request so this is the signing request the crt okay kafka signing request okay now the ca right signs the request using their um sorry private key okay they're using their private key they sign the request and they give us the signed certificate so this is our request to certificate authority and this is comes back from certificate authority to us okay so this is the signed certificate okay now we can import the certificate into the, our key store that is what i am we are doing nothing else and the clients right the clients need 
the root certificate okay because in our case um, their mission they will not have the root certificate right so we have to have that actually so we are import that we are importing that into that trust store okay so this is it will contain um, yeah the public certificates which you trust okay this is secret stuff we will not be sharing okay so this is what it is in a super high level and if you want you can run this script and so that you can create create new certificates but the, for me i am already sharing everything the only the two thing you need is this is for server okay mainly for server the key store and this is for clients okay uh, this is the public key something like that okay the roots uh, public certificate okay this is what we need actually nothing else okay so now uh, let's check our security properties and let's check everything one by one if you go and check the jaws config right here literally there is no change we are still going to have username password everything okay same concept but only thing is the client server communication is going to be encrypted now ssl that's what we are going to have okay so if you check the security properties which is server properties okay uh, it's no longer sasl plain text now it's sasl ssl okay we enable uh, encryption between client server communication that's what we are doing okay so we use this everywhere okay however remember this is plain don't get confused again remember that the sasl mechanism right this is not ldap this is not auth we are still using simple username password authentication okay so for that it's still plain but the communication is ssl okay so for the server we are saying that hey server this is where we are doing the volume mapping with the search directory right so i am saying that this is where the key store location is there and the password is change it and the trust store is it's in this path and the password is also change it for that that's what i'm saying for the server the kafka server will be using the key store etc okay now i'm saying that consumer properties but it's for client okay so the client jaws config we are still using plain username password client client secret okay and the security protocol it's not plain text is sasl ssl because that's what we have enabled in the server okay but the sasl mechanism is plain because we are using simple username password okay and we are telling that where the trust store the location because we need to have the the root um, sorry the certificate of authority is public key okay so we have to have that trust store definitely this guy should not be having the key store actually for this okay so now using this it can contact the communicate with the um, server okay so now let's try to create the same the topic um, one more time and see how it works then we can update our application hey guys now i am running the kafka server in the ssl mode i'm starting from scratch so please ensure that you are also doing the same okay now uh, this is the command line and the, the terminal okay we are the client as usual i am going to ask the broker to create a topic i'm doing the usual way without passing the the configuration consumer properties etc so no credential no nothing just i'm going to simply give like this and i'm going to hit enter we will be seeing some weird exception that could be kind of a little bit misleading do not panic if i hit enter it says that timeout exception out of memory error all those things okay it will be kind of a little bit confusing but if you go and check this the docker log right server log right it's ssl handshake failed okay so this is particularly normal for this kind of command line tools to kind of hide the actual error and show this kind of error saying that out of memory error etc so do not panic um, this see this um, consider this as a noun issue okay so okay so now what we are going to do here is i already have shared the consumer properties right okay so we are going to use the consumer properties to create the topic okay now i am passing credentials etc everything okay so now if i create a topic it's created great 
Now in the application, right? I have copied the trust store and I pasted it under source main resources. When we use Spring, we can simply say class path colon um, Kafka trust store JKS path directly. We can give like this, okay? But here I am not using Spring, so I have to give the full path. Okay, so whatever we have in the consumer properties, right? So we have to give all those properties here. So here there is no change. This is plain, but this is not plain text. It's SSL, SSL. And here the username password, right? There is no change. So let's put a comma and we are going to continue here. Okay, so we have to have uh, like the SSL config, right? Similarly, we have something called the SSL config. Okay, so SSL configs. Okay, so here we have to give the trust store location. Okay, so we have to give the trust store location. The trust store, right? So paths dot get it's under source main resources Kafka trust store JKS. Okay, so to absolute path to string. Okay, let's keep it like that. Okay, so basically. Uh, under source main resources this is where it is that's what i'm saying okay and ssl configs uh, trust to store password config okay so the password is change it okay so this is what we have uh, so we are giving exactly as we have in the consumer properties okay some additional configuration okay so now if i run this Okay, I should be able to produce successfully. Okay. Again, the concept is same for um, the consumer as well. 